My name is Jose Sanchez. We're here at the National High Magnetic Field Lab, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make a model of a comet. You may have seen a comet streak across the night sky, but you'll probably never have the chance to see a real one up close. Scientists make models all the time to help us understand what things look like and how they function. To make the comet, you need some dry ice, water, a window cleaner, a can of soda, dark soda, uh, and a blender. Oh, you also need some sand and some soil. Each of the ingredients in the model represents one of the actual ingredients scientists have discovered in comets. In 2004, the NASA Stardust spaceship collected material from a comet known as Vilt-2. The ship brought the so-called comet dust back to Earth, where scientists at the Mag Lab and elsewhere have been studying it for clues about the origin of our solar system. First thing we'll do is I'll add the water. The water in our model represents the water that makes up part of the comet's ice. Make sure you use a metal bowl. The dry ice, which is frozen carbon dioxide, is minus 109 degrees Fahrenheit, or about minus 78 degrees Celsius. That's cold enough to crack a plastic bowl, and cold enough to give you a bad case of frostbite if you touch it. Next, add the soda. The sugar and carbon dioxide in soda represents carbon-based organic material found in comets. We use a dark colored soda because it better simulates the color of comets. And you just pour that in with the water. Then squirt in some glass cleaner. The ammonia in it is an example of the nitrogen hydrogen compounds found in comets. Now I'm going to add the uh, soil. Another stand in for the bit of organic material in comet dust. And then I'll add a couple of handfuls of sand, which represents the mineral grains. It's for good reason that comets are sometimes referred to as dirty snowballs. Dry ice comes in pellet form, but we need something finer for our comet model. We can put the dry ice in the blender, blend it up, it almost makes like a powder, just like snow. And then you pour that into our mixture. As I say, I usually put around four of these in there just to start. And sometimes you gotta like shake this up a little bit re-blend it again. So you've got a nice powder. Then you pour the dry ice into the mixture. This is the really cool part because it starts to make all the smoke. That smoke is the dry ice sublimating, turning directly from solid ice form into gas, entirely skipping the liquid phase. On comets, the frozen ice is also sublimate as the comet approaches the sun, heating up. Now stir everything together. Then reach in and form the mixture into a ball. You can see and hear sublimation in action. You can see that it's bubbling and fizzing. That's what the comet does as it approaches the sun. The frozen material on the comet starts to heat up and starts to fizz away. From down here on planet Earth, we observe this phenomenon in the comet's tail, which can stretch for more than one million miles. That tail is sometimes in front of the comet. You may tend to think that tails are always behind something. In this case, when the comet is going away from the sun, the tail is in the front of the comet because the solar winds are moving at a higher speed than the comet itself, so it pushes all those particles to the front. Our handy model helps to illustrate this phenomenon. As I move it, you can see the tail forms behind it. However, if I simulate the solar wind with me blowing air on it, I'm pushing that in an opposite direction. So now you know how to make a comet. You can try this and lots of other experiments at home. Find out more at magnet.fsu.edu slash education.